Hi everyone, my name is Anne. Thanks for joining me today on Art on the Creek. We're in my home studio in Parker, Colorado, and I've got some fun things I've never done on this channel before. And it's been a while since I've done them myself in my own studio. So I thought I'd share with you and we'll see what we can come up with. I have some Daniel Smith watercolor ground and I've got these cool wooden panels. So let's see what we can do with watercolor on wood. Are you ready? Let's go try it. First of all, the audio gets better, I promise. On these first few sections where I'm going over the process of applying the ground, I am in a different location and I don't have my microphone with me, so I apologize. Uh, first of all, when you, when you have this ground like mine, um, you can add water to it if it's been sitting a while and you haven't used it, like I haven't, to loosen it up again. So I'm just taking my pipette and adding a little bit of water here. I purchased my watercolor ground at my local art supply store, but I have seen it everywhere from Amazon to online art stores to uh, craft stores. Uh, you can get it just about everywhere. You shouldn't have any trouble finding this whatsoever. And once I've got this thinned out enough with water, and again, when you buy it brand new, you won't have to go through this process. I'm just using a tongue depressor to stir it up there, and the brush I'm using is a chip brush. Um, then you can start painting. I looked at the panels, which are birch, and they didn't need any preparatory work to them. So we can get right in and apply this to the panels. We're going to need to put on at least two coats. And as much as it looks like I'm about ready to spill a huge blob out of it, nothing happened. Despite my best efforts, that's not what made the mess. I always have to laugh at myself when I start a project because I always make more mess than is necessary, but I just think that means I'm having a whole lot of fun. So there. <laughs> um, okay, when you are painting this, you'll notice you might get some of these little gloops and blobs. I think in my case, I'm getting those because uh, my, uh, my product is just a little bit old. I'm gonna add more water to it here in just a second to get it to loosen up a little bit more. But in your final coat, when you're putting this on, you wanna make sure that you use one solid brush stroke that goes the length of whatever it is you're doing. You want to have as little starts and stops as possible because you want to try and get it as smooth as possible. Now, that said, if you want to add a lot of texture in your brush strokes for your substrate, you can do that. So this really is quite versatile. For me, I wanted it to kind of look like a wood grain, so I'm trying to get these brush strokes as smooth as I possibly can. So four panels later, two coats and a little bit of mess. Thank God everything is water soluble. <laughs> I don't like dealing with solvents. Uh, my hands are a mess. Everything washes up with soap and water, and I'm going to let these dry. I've got two coats on each one, and I'm going to let them dry for a long time before we paint. Well, it's been several days since I painted those. In fact, almost a month. Um, you know, you set things aside, and you get on another project. But anyway, the, the sides didn't turn out too great, so I thought if I just had some sanding paper, I'm just going to do this off camera. Yeah, that makes that a little better. So let me go ahead and sand all of these edges. And um, we're only going to work on one, but I just wanted to show you kind of how they come out. I'm going to use what's called a CMY palette to, uh, to create this painting for us today. And CMY, you'll notice that in your printers, maybe in your printer ink if you've got a, a printer at home. The C is for cyan, M is for magenta, and Y is for yellow. So if you see something, a color palette called a CMYK, that K stands for black in printer world, just to confuse us because we use BK in, in art for pigments, but no matter. This is <laughs> cerulean blue, so we're going to put just a little of that out on the palette. I might have to get my, no, I can do it. Yay, go hands. There's the cerulean blue. And whenever you're using watercolor out of the tube, you really don't need to use too much at all. I'll just set these up here. And then a lemon yellow. Here we go. And I wanted to show you these because they're all single pigments in this set. And I really like mixing with single pigments because that way you can get really beautiful, vibrant, clean mixes. Not that you can't otherwise, 
but I just really like them. So with these, this will be our red, yellow, and blue. We can mix anything and everything that we need. Uh, since this is going to be a bit of a rougher surface, I'm going to use a, a nylon filament brush. And they're nylon bristles, but I really like them. So I think I'm going to use them for this. What I want to do today, now this is the Daniel Smith watercolor ground that's on here. It does come in white, and I want to say it comes in clear. And this is kind of a buff titanium. Um, I'm going to paint some uh, lilacs because we have lilacs blooming in our backyard and here's just some pictures for you to see I'll just kind of let them scroll through and I will put links to all of these photos in the description down below just look for reference photos it's usually towards the bottom of all the description if you ever have trouble getting to the descriptions in my videos just look at the title and then you'll see a little word that says more if you click on more then it will expand the entire description and you can see all the links to everything that I put in plus whatever reference photos or images that I'm providing for you. So I'm going to give you those lilac images that I took today. This lilac is right out of our bedroom window. It's just starting to bloom. By the time that you see this, it will be tomorrow and I will have filmed this yesterday. So this is pretty much what our lilac bush looks like right now. We are a little bit behind um, the Denver metro area because we're higher up in elevation. I go down to uh, take care of my mother-in-law uh, once a week we just kind of hang out and have fun she just needs to have a little help around the house doing some things and we have a lot of fun together but uh, what I was going to say is that whenever I go there it's like spring and is always two weeks ahead or fall is two weeks ahead because um, their elevation is lower and the temperature is just that much different now our lilacs are just starting to come out but this morning it was so nice out because we had some rain last night and the birds were singing and this is the main photo that i'm going to get my inspiration from today i've got a few others that i'll link to down below but i just wanted you to uh, enjoy the sounds of nature here for just a minute or so before we begin painting Thank you for indulging me. Isn't that just so nice though? Our lilacs are just getting ready to bloom, so let's see what we can do with that. So on this ground, you can just use it regular, regularly blah, blah, like you would with uh, any kind of watercolor paper. Um, it, it does have a lot of texture to it. It feels a little bit gritty. You, I'm just using a regular pencil, so there's no special preparation that you need to worry about there. And let's see, I'm just trying, trying to get the directions of these petals here. There's that one kind of goes like that. And I'm just kind of using little markers to help me remember where these go. The brush that I want to use is a number eight today. Uh, this is a nylon filament brush. And I really like the way that they work. They've got a beautiful point on them. And uh, I really like having something with a really nice point on it for detail. So with the blue and the yellow, we can make green. With the blue and the red, we can make purple. So what I want to do first, though, is to start with some of this red over here. And just keep it as a red. Get it kind of kind of loose. This is about the texture of 2% milk. And I'm just going to start painting in very loosely little shapes where the lilacs will be now right now um, what this feels like it doesn't really feel like paper if anything it feels like hot press paper so I want to do some wet on wet so let me go ahead and just kind of get a little bit of this filled in very loosely so that I can kind of go back in here when it is wet and add some technique to it because you should be able to paint as if you were using watercolor paper and then we'll mix some of the magenta with that to make a nice purple a little more of the magenta I want it kind of a reddish purple there we go now let's try dropping some of this in to see how it performs on the ground the watercolor ground and to be honest, it seems like it's really acting much like watercolor paper. I'm not having any issues at all. I'm going to go ahead and be really abstract with this. 
and I'm going to intentionally miss some places just to kind of see what style we can get with this because I'm as I'm painting it I'm realizing that uh, this wood is really giving me an interesting texture now there I've dropped some on it where are my paper towels here they are so let's see if we can lift that off really easily and we can so that's no problem whatsoever I like that I like that you can lift with this fairly easily and the pencil was very easy to use I think that's all I want to do here for now ah change my mind let me go a little bit more into the blue and we'll get just some shadows going in here Kind of intentionally touching it up against the purple but i really like the way that's turning out so far here i will zoom in so that you guys can see that really kind of gives it a cool effect i'll just make it a little more uh, bloomed out than it is when this plant is is fully bloomed it really is beautiful let's see now i think what i'd like to do whoops i need to rinse my brush a little bit more Let's get some of this yellow and some of the blue and let's make a nice green. Now that is way too blue. So let me add some yellow to that. That's a nice spring green. And if you want to tone it down just a touch, you can add a little bit of magenta and you see how that darkens that right up. I want to bring it up just a touch. So we'll get some more yellow in there and that's about the perfect green. Kind of a sap green is what I'm looking for. So now I'm going to come in and add this stem. And since it's still wet, whenever I touch uh, the paint that's already there, it's going to pick up those colors, but that's absolutely fine. So I'm kind of intentionally leaving some space here to add just a little bit of interest. And now let's see, I'll just kind of fill this in like so. And I'm not gonna go all the way up yet with that get it back up to that sap green I'm just trying to make more of it here there we go and now a lilac leaf is kind of heart shaped so I'm making the stem there's the stem and then I will come down for the center line like so and then I'm going to come out and lift my brush and come up to end in a point and you can clean that up and then I'm going to do the same but not not equally apart from the center. I'm just going to come about like so. And I'll find that center line there. And I'm calling it a center line. What I want to use it for is a guide as to where I want to leave a highlight down the center. So for now, that's about what I'm going to go with. But little things like, for instance, let's mix a, a different green here. We'll get another, another little pile of green going. That's what I want, almost a viridian and let's just see if we can drop some color in and you see we can it does migrate along the leaf and that makes for a fairly interesting effect let's try and do that over here as well all right and things look better in threes so let's add another leaf here make this one kind of way in the back let me see what i can come up with here i'll pull it out this way and have it come down and now I'm not letting this uh, really run into this leaf just yet. You could, but we don't want to do that right now. I'm just trying to get it to be different enough and to have it be behind that leaf. Now we'll go into that blue again just a little bit. Get a nice gray going, mixing it with that purple. And let's just add some shadow to this. Yeah, can you see how that, I just add that paint and it just kind of blends in like that? That's really very nice. Okay, we're going to come back in and add some detail on that leaf that's back behind there in just a little bit. But let's go ahead and uh, put another couple leaves down here, shall we? Let's see, I'm going to add some yellow to this green. And bring in just a touch of that magenta. And then let's put a leaf about here brush is getting a little dry now I wouldn't recommend using uh, your really good water brushes on this this is a really big tooth on here it's a pretty pretty strong texture 
you can achieve some really good dry brush techniques with it. It's, it's, I would say it's probably not going to harm your brushes, but why take the risk when you're... And I'm going to focus on these four petaled blossoms. We're trying to make them go different directions, thinking if they were all coming out at you from, uh, from a, a core somehow, like if they're dandelion spikes or something like that. So I'm just really being loose with it, just really kind of trying to decide where those lines would be. And we'll drop in a bit more pigment. And I really like the way this one back here, maybe a few buds that haven't bloomed yet. I like the way this one over here blended that magenta with the purple. So let me go into the straight magenta here. And let's get some of that going back here. I really think that's pretty. Well, these may, may or may not look like lilacs to you when we're done. But as always with my tutorials, you know, I'm a very loose painter. And uh, whether you think this is lilacs or not, that's fine. I'm just remembering my day <laughs> and uh, how much I like that. I get a little... If there's an awful lot going on in a in a painting, it's just it tends to be my least favorite thing to do to try and focus on all that detail. And I know that a lot of people really enjoy that, and I probably should enjoy it more. But I, what can I say? It's not my thing. Um, I just prefer painting generalities. All right, now right away I can see that this green leaf. That I've got going here needs to go back toward the back a little bit. So let me bring this. I'll bring this green up here. So this is going in front of that leaf. And I need it to show up here in the flower. And I might as well bring it here too. There we are. And now let's see for this leaf here make it a little more cohesive with this other one over here. These, those are, have a cooler green to them and I'll do the same with this one here. Now that we've got that, that's almost done. What I want to do is liven this up. So I'm going to get the brush really wet and I'm going to go into this purple that we've mixed and let's give it some splatters. some green into the splatters here. If your splatters ever don't go quite the way you want them to, you can easily lift them off. Which is what I'm going to do with that one there. And I'll come in with more of those guys. All right. Now I'm going to dry this again and then let's see how we can finish this. Alrighty, I've gotten my Fine Tech paints and I'm just going to spray them because that really helps these guys. I can still use the number eight because it's got such a good point, but I'm going to go ahead and go into the four, I think. And I think with these, I really like this lighter gold. It's very pretty, very iridescent. See how that gets so nice and creamy right away? And here's the idea I had. I'm going to try and, and kind of outline a few of these. Not really outline, I guess, what's the word? Kind of accentuate. And then over here we'll do the same. I think I really like this one here. And maybe this one going down this way into the flower. And you see, I don't know if you can see, but that is picking up just a little bit of the purple from underneath. So you do need to be aware of that, that uh, none of these are really anchored because they are all water soluble. So you do want to be a little bit careful in how you apply these. One of the paints in this Fine Tech set is a pigment shift paint. 
Uh, it is in the left-hand column there, that second one from the top. It shifts between a green pigment and a bronze pigment. So I'm going to kind of use that to go very loosely outlining these leaves. I'm not really following their uh, exact pattern. I'm just suggesting an outline with that pigment shifting iridescent paint. Now I'm going to go back to a wider brush. I think I'm going to use the number 12 this time. And now I'm going to go into this uh, burgundy color. Kind of a pinky purple. And I'll put that over here. Kind of a rosy color. And then we'll mix it with the purple. There, I kind of like that. And I think what I'm going to do is just try and go along the edge here. Have it go, for, I'm having, trying to go for kind of that uh, old, old paper look since this is a buff titanium shade I'm hoping that it will end up looking like kind of like a torn map uh, with is sitting on top of this uh, purple glitter that I'm putting back here this is one of those things you could probably sit and fiddle with for hours I won't I promise <laughs> All right, so I'll get this dry. As I'm drying this here, I'm going to go around with a very wet brush and just kind of uh, dissolve those hard edges just a little bit and make it look a little bit more natural along that edge of the map. I want to kind of make it look like the entire edge has either been torn or burned and then aged. So let's see how this comes out. I think I'll use the brown first. Uh, this is a Derwent pastel pencil in umber. I'm going to go around, well, I'm going to go around this edge here as if it were uh, burned paper. I'm just trying to smudge this pastel line and bring that pigment in. For some reason, it's not really sticking right in this particular spot. So we'll just go with it. If something is burned, it shouldn't look even, right? So I'm being careful not to rest my hand on here. There, see how that lifts that off and brings it forward? Uh, let me look and see what I've got here. I've got a 4B, that's gonna be more black than a 2B. 6B, okay, I'm gonna go with the 6B here. And I'm just going to go on the very, very edge of it on the outside with the black. Because that would be the singed edge to go over this with some of the Fine Tech Gold. And I want to make sure this paint is fairly thick when I'm putting this on. So that's about the texture of heavy cream. And we're just going to follow through and put it on like so. I really like watching the mica on this one. Let me show you. I'll zoom in here so that you can see this is really kind of a cool effect. Can you see the way those sparkles just move and absorb into the ground? I really like that. This fine tech gold is pretty opaque. I like it very much. Yeah, that ground is very thirsty. It really just absorbs right in. This side is going to need a little bit more. And this side is too. A pigment liner. Is this the one that has, yeah, this is the one I want to use. I'm trying to touch the edge because it's still wet. And I think we're done. That was a lot of fun. I really liked using the CMY palette and uh, my Mission Magella Mission Gold paints are always easy to use. I'll be able to use up these paints on other projects. And there you go. There's kind of a neat way to do spring lilacs with pastel pencils and watercolor using watercolor ground on a panel. Of course, using watercolor ground on wood is only one way to try and uh, see what else you can watercolor. You could use that on glass, on tin, on just about everything. So this really can open the doors for you if uh, you want to try and do watercolor on a new surface.
I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I so appreciate your comments, your sharing the videos, your likes. It really does help my channel and I'm hoping to grow so that we can establish a Patreon in the very near future. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week and we will see you in the comments and we'll see you at the next video. Bye now.